Alright guys and welcome back to the Saints View, the channel for something content for our end of season reviews. I'm with Tom, we're outside St Mary's, we're going to have a little look back on the season. First part, um, first of all mate, sum up the season, we've hit the heavy heights of 16th, we stayed up in the end. What do you think about this season? I think it's season two off, the first part of the season with Hughes was pathetic really, nine points by the start of December, then he was booted out. Got the main man Ralph in, he changed it around pretty much instantly, obviously the Cardiff game was his first game. Didn't quite work out, but I don't count that as his game really. Mm. And then, end of the year, once we were safe, like we were on the beach a little bit, didn't really seem like the players were that bothered. But overall, 16th. It's it satisfying. Yeah. It, like it's satisfactory. We're safe. We've got a chance now to build next season, which I think every fan expects and the club expects as well. But for this first part, we're going to look back all the way back to that man that you just mentioned, Mark Hughes. Pre-season, we're off to China. Get a couple of wins. Get a couple of draws. Get a couple of really bad <laughs> performances. Overall, it looked all right. The club had told him top 10 and he bought into that. Um, and I think the players bought into it as well. And we had, squad-wise, we were good enough to finish top 10. But I think just the manager just didn't work. And we start the season, we get given a handful of decent fixtures, especially at home. Burnley um, at home, obviously Everton away, we don't have a good result at um, like pass at Everton. And then Leicester at home as well, Palace away. I think everyone was probably thinking maybe eight or nine points. Obviously... We, we didn't get anywhere near that. We got half of that. Um, start off with a board draw at home to Burnley. Obviously, they'd been playing in the Europa League for the previous month. But then I think the following two performances just weren't good enough in terms of losing 2-1 at Everton and then at home to Leicester. But then after that, I mean, one of the away games of the season, 2-0 win at Palace. We look a lot better. Vestergaard looks amazing. McCarthy keeps us in the game. Ings looks like the striker we've been craving for two, three seasons. I mean, at that point, were you optimistic? Were you a little bit disappointed? Or did you think, no, we will be fighting relegation this season? I think after the Palace game, I was quite optimistic. But having seen what I'd seen before the Palace game, gave me more doubts. Uh, the Burnley game in particular was just a ball fest. They'd been in Europe on the first day and the first day after, would have been the first day after. We should have taken advantage of that game. Mm. And then the Leicester game as well, being one up, Hobo got himself sent off yeah. to <laughs> dive in. And then one up, two, two one down in the last sort of second that Maguire goal. Just frustrating, but overall, I wasn't very happy with the start. Four points from four is not really good enough, but we've got an international break. At the time, when we're actually building up a little bit of momentum, um, Brighton at home. I mean, I like Brighton. I don't really mind them. They know it's not a derby. They've got their own rivalry. We've got our own rivalry, as cannot be said for the other team down the road in the Premier League. <laughs> but, um, I mean, they offered nothing on the day and came away with a point. 2-0 up with 60 minutes um, on the clock. I mean, how, how did we let that one slip? And for me, personally, I think that sort of epitomises the entire season. To this day, I still don't know how he didn't win that game. 2-0 up, uh, home and host, I felt, at the time. And then... Just a, I think it was two set pieces on it. Um, let him back in it. And a penalty at the penalty, end. Penalty, yeah. It probably was a penalty, to be fair, but I think. Shocking for more prowess. Yeah, it was awful, yeah. I think. I think it's just so frustrating to lose a lead, which happens a lot happens a lot in the season. Yeah. Well, after that, we go on an awful run of not scoring, what, I think, about six games. So, you obviously, inevitably lose at Liverpool. They've been winning all their games at that point. 2 0 loss at uh, Wolves. Um, who else am I thinking? Bournemouth 0 0. Newcastle at home 0 0. Chelsea lost. I mean, the Chelsea performance for me was probably one of the worst all season. 3 0 at home. You know, we, I know they were a top six side and flying at the time, but you don't give your um, give your home fans that to watch. Yeah, at that point, I'm I'm really worried at this point. We've got not got enough points. We're not putting the ball in the back of the net. Um, Defensively, we look a bit of a shambles. Vestergaard hasn't played to his price tag. Elian Usi looks lost. I think the only one who sort of was satisfying uh, in terms of his price tag was uh, was Danny Ings. Yeah, that was probably the worst part of the season for me. Like I say, not scoring in six games. Ings looked good, but we weren't scoring, so you can't really give him a massive amount of credit. We weren't getting points on the yeah. board either. And I think, obviously, <laughs> in the end, we do break our goal duck with worst performance of the season for you. 6-1 at Eddie Head. Was yeah. it 3-0 down after 15 minutes? It's got to go down as the worst one for me. Yeah, Wesley Hoyt Masterclass, that one. <laughs> um, anyway, 4-1 at half-time as well. That was shocking. Oh. Um, but I think that's what happens when Mark Hughes tries to play attacking football against the best attacking side in the country, if not Europe. Um, obviously, we got cut apart. We get back to St Mary's the week after with a completely different game. I don't know how many points we've got at this point. It's not enough, obviously. We're well and deeply in the relegation zone. Fans are worried at this point. Watford at home. 
we say this is our must win. I mean, I think it was the first game we'd had for a while at home against a non-top six side. Watford had been playing well, fighting for that seventh spot as they did all season. But we knew it was our must win. And to be fair, we played well enough to win the football match in the end. Yeah, definitely. It was obviously the uh, episode of Charlie Austin. Getting a bit mad Which off. the game will be reminded, like, remembered for. It's just... I don't know, I don't know how many the refs, but that was, that was a bad decision, wasn't it? It's, it's... Do you think... Honest, OK, so this is going away from the topic a little bit, but do you think the introduction of VAR for next season will help? Not just Southampton, but especially... What, I think Watford would have um, been in top four if we had VAR, saw a table or a stat or whatever. Um, do you think teams like Southampton, sort of middle, mid-table, maybe fighting against relegation, will be helped by VAR next season? I think the big teams are worried. Yeah. They're, they're not going to get all the decisions. Look at that Cardiff game against Chelsea, where well, they probably should have won if they'd have been for that horrendous yeah. decision. Uh, it's going to, yeah, it'll help the lower teams out massively and the big teams are going to not benefit from the decisions now. Well, obviously, we draw that 1-1-1. One, one, one. At this point, it looks like Hughes is off. The reports are saying that if he hadn't won that game, he will be gone. But we go into an international break and he's still here. For me, I felt that was probably the right decision only because the candidates that were available were just not going to improve Allardyce, Moyes, you know, those sort of typical British post-Brexit managers <laughs> um, that just weren't going to improve the football. Maybe keep us up, yeah, fair enough. But then we'd be back to square one. And then another must win, Fulham away. They're what, bottom of the table in the relegation zone. They've just brought a manager in. Perfect start for them. Yeah, they did what we should have done, I think. Um, Ranieri, obviously a little bit, bit, of a, bit of a bounce, but again, two went up. Uh, Armstrong, two good goals. And then Wesley Hoyt, uh, yet again. Um, Cedric as well, mate. Cedric, yeah, Cedric. Um, That's probably that was just horrendous. Um, I don't know, it was probably, that was our worst game. At that point, did you think we're getting down? Did you think we're getting relegated? I've got to admit, I did. Um, to lose in that manner to a team that was down there with us. Yeah, of course. Um, it was just, I couldn't see anywhere past it. Um, with the games we had coming up as well, obviously Arsenal, United, Chelsea, and that sort of month. Mm. Well, I think that's put on brilliantly. We did think, oh God, we've got a lot of home games now against top six sides. Um, Man United being the next one. But you know what? Fair play to Hughes, fair play to the players, because they pulled out a really good performance. Yes, they lost a 2-0 lead. Yes, they were playing probably one of the worst teams in terms of form, <laughs> not even just the top six, the entire league at that point. Um, Mourinho just wasn't getting anything out of his players. But I remember straight after, we were quite sort of enthused, if you can hear us with that ambulance, we were quite enthused because um, we had a cup game at Leicester. He brought Vestergaard back in. Vestergaard looked a lot better. We kept a clean sheet. Yes, we went out on penalties. Oh, big whoops, we were going to have Man City at home in the next round anyway. He brings Vestergaard in for the Man United game. And OK, we conceded two goals from being 2-0 up. But I thought we just didn't give them any sort of opportunities second half. And then at the end of the day, a point was all right. Yeah, I would have taken a point before the game. It was just obviously frustrating the way it happened. Mm. But um, at that point in the season, any point was a bonus, really. Sure. Um, so, yeah, it was frustrating to lose, lose the 2 0 lead. But, yeah. Well, arguably one of the best performances of the season under Hughes, if not the best, especially at home. He gets sacked. And I don't think anyone was seeing that after sort of getting the 2 2. I think most fans were probably thinking, God, he's, he's going to be here for a good couple more months unless it really just doesn't improve. Uh, we bring Haas and Nuttall in after a couple of days. Obviously, he has to watch on an awful performance at Tottenham. And then, first game, Cardiff away. Didn't really go to plan, did it? No, it was the best guard sort of mistake. Mm. It's, I don't really count that as his game because I know he's there. He was managing, but sure. it didn't really feel like his game. And after that, it was, it was brilliant. But then the game after that was his game. Arsenal at home, he was good at that, wasn't he? Oh. I mean, hadn't won against the top six for, what was it? Two and a half years? I mean, that is, I mean, that in itself is shocking. But Arsenal at the time, what was it, 20-odd games unbeaten. We ended their run. I mean, at that point, obviously, people weren't thinking, oh, sick, we're going um, to be staying up now. A lot of work was still to be done. But, you know, there was a lot more hope in the football club than there was, um, there was uh, under Hughes. I think when you saw the scenes afterwards, the way the players and the management reacted, you could tell how big a win that was. Because, like you say, two and a half years not being in the top six team was very worrying. And... It led us in nicely to the Christmas period, given the win behind us. Well, you say two and a half years until we, uh, for the time that we beat a top six side in the league. I think it was probably about two and a half years when we won back-to-back -back games in the league. <laughs> it, it felt like that anyway. Obviously, we go to Huddersfield, we win that one as well. And we're thinking, OK, you know what, we, we could be all right team uh, under Hazen as well. Yes, a couple more poor performances at home. I think the West Ham, for me... 
arguably the best side to have come to St Mary's this season, or definitely the one that sort of didn't, I didn't really expect. Obviously, when a top six side comes, you expect really good things, especially Man City. Chelsea, when they came here, they were in the form of the season. Uh, they were really good, despite us being poor. But you know what, Anderson tore us a new one in that game. And then, you know, we got another home game just three days later. Fair play to the squad for managing it as well as they did, in my opinion. You know, we bring in 18-year-old Kane Ramsey at right back against the champions of the uh, of the uh, of the English Premier League and they needed a reaction at the time they just lost uh, a palace a home to palace and away at Leicester they needed the reaction and I thought to be honest 3-1 at home to City when we were struggling it wasn't the worst result in the world but it, it still didn't look really that good we were we were still in the relegation zone we were still fighting for points obviously everyone was a lot more enthused with Haas and it all but at that point we thought god we've got a few more difficult games to come and other teams are you know other teams are winning i think in the end cardiff have actually won more games than we have so they other teams around us were picking up the results but i think we we're a lot more enthused come the end of the year weren't we yeah i was a lot more positive heading into the end of the year despite like i say losing to west ham city the city game i was, didn't really didn't really expect much out of it so to get a through on loss of damage limitation move on sort of thing the West Ham one was quite frustrating because we went one up again and then uh, Anderson sort of tore us apart from our own corner which happened quite a lot that, yeah I was going to say um, but yeah overall that West Ham game was frustrating but they're probably actually don't say one of the best teams to come yeah, to St. Mary's this year absolutely well probably one of the best teams away from home as well spanking us as well but that wraps up the first part of our end of season reviews remember to like the video if you have enjoyed it subscribe to the channel if you are new and we'll see you in the next part. Stay tuned for that.